Hi, my name is Henry. I am a, currently a senior at the Canadian International School of Beijing, and today I'll be talking about some of the necessary skills and traits in order for one to be future ready. In fact, as much as I hate to admit it, but some of the most important skills for us to be future ready are the ATL skills, or the approaches to learning skills. But don't worry, I'm not, I'm not going to make you suffer the same pain I suffered in my sixth grade advisory class. Instead, I want to be talking about communication skills. Communication skills is the one single most skill I value out of all the ATL skills because in today's society, everything requires communication skills. Without communication skills, it will be impossible for one to succeed, whether that's in school, daily life, or even at work. Luckily for me, I got to practice my communication skills at a very young age. One of my most memorable examples was from my eighth grade science fair project. At, the, at that time, I got paired with this person called Jay. He's a really nice guy, very good friend of mine, and when I first got the groups, I was like, yes! Oh my god, we're gonna have so much fun, we're gonna smash this project! But once we were given class time to work on it, I found out that Jay's the type of guy to play Plants vs. Zombies and watch K-pop music videos in class. Not looking good for my report card. And that's when I first started my uh, journey of persuading people. And so, on a casual Wednesday afternoon, after hours of persuasion and a bit of help from Ms. Malcolm, he finally gave in and my 8th grade report card was saved. And right now is actually the best time for you to practice communication skills because in university, there will be a lot bigger classes and your professor might not even notice your existence if you don't actively communicate, let alone help you, you convince your science fair partner to work. But, let's be honest, no one's going to have bad partners constantly. In fact, some of the work in later life has to be done by your own. But that does not mean communication skills is completely useless. In fact, as a, as a past procrastinator, communication skills has been very important to me, especially with teachers. Asking for extension an hour before the deadline, that was me in middle school. <laughs> Although it would occasionally work, but it's like a once in a lifetime thing, but, so don't depend on it. But even in DP, I would still get people mess messaging me like the night before an exam and be like, Henry, Henry, you gotta help me! Oh my god, our exam is tomorrow, what am I gonna do? Send me your notes! I don't know what I'm gonna study! Like, I've seen these real cases of people who are still procrastinating DP. So do not expect that procrastination will just magically go away once you grow older. It is something that we have to go actively solve ourselves, whether that's through getting other people's help or constructing a very detailed plan. But, as I mentioned before, I was a very big pro procrastinator in middle school. In fact, one of my most common phrases back then would be, it's okay, it's just the middle school assessment, the high school assessments are really what matters for university. Of course, the teachers, that, to, of course, the teachers that will be something like, <coughs> uh, my uh, <coughs> computer broke down yesterday, so uh, the work didn't save. Or Moodle and ManageBack crashed, and I could not submit on time. Although the Moodle thing actually did happen, so I wasn't lying. But although I would get away with some of my stupid excuses, one of my older friends told me that teachers are not stupid. They're just more lenient on you when you're young. And in university, if you go up to your professor and be like, uh, my dog ate my homework, so I needed a one-week extension, they would not give a crap. But unfortunately, I had that conversation at the very end of grade 10, which meant I had very little time to actually go solve this problem and to be future ready for DP. Well, luckily for me though, I got to end off my NYP journey with a bunch of exams, not some of the assessments. Exams are something that are impossible to get an extension on, which kind of solves part of my problem, but the real change came in the summer before grade 11. Uh, during the summer, I went on this supplementary teaching trip to rural areas of China, and originally I just went there because I like little kids, and I don't want to spend my summer riding in front of a computer. But it was only after that, uh, that journey I realized how lucky of a person I am. Keep in mind that our, our trip was during summer, which meant that those kids were there voluntarily. So I was like, why would anyone give up their summer time to listen to a bunch of high schoolers teaching them stuff? It was with that question in mind that I started my week of teaching there. For the most part, the kids are very shy, but they're very eager to learn. They would already have their pen and paper out before we even went into the classroom. I would say that is better than most middle school kids, at least during my time. So I was like, where, did they, where are they getting all this study motivation from? Well, all the mystery was solved after a period of PE class. Uh, during PE class, I got some mud on my hands, so naturally I wanted to go find a place to wash it off afterwards. But it was only then that I realized 
they don't have a functioning tap inside of the entire school. And a local teacher offered to take me to a nearby village to wash it off. And of course I declined as we still had another class to go. But I was shocked. And after I went into the classroom, I was again shocked. Because before we came, our director had told us to leave our portable fans at our hotel. Naturally, everyone just thought that there would be AC there, right? Well, no. Unlike the tap, the AC was not broken. They flat out did not have them. That feeling is literally worse than my work actually not saving on Moodle. Like, imagine wearing five hoodies inside of a sauna. That's what it felt like. But yeah, their learning, their learning conditions and their motivation is really shocked me and is a major factor that led to my change, whether that's my work efficiency improving or the times I procrastinate decreasing. But not everyone will have an opportunity to experience something like that. So here's a quick. Before I did this talk, I did some background research and um, I found out that procrastination is mainly caused by our brain sending a be lazy message to the rest of our body. So what we could do is do something before that be lazy message goes through. Actually, try this. Tomorrow morning, or Monday morning, when your alarm rings, no matter how cozy your bed is, just get out before that be lazy message goes through and keep your hand off that snooze button. Oh, of course, there will be more suitable ways for each indi individual person, but whatever you do, do not go asking for your teachers for an extension 10 minutes before deadline using some stupid excuses. And if you guys can do that after listening to me blab for eight minutes, then I think all the teachers here would owe me a round of applause. Thank you.